First sex, now murder. <laughs> so now we have a question about killing people. What would you rather do? Kill one person to save a thousand or let one live and one thousand must die? It's one of these what-if questions. No <laughs> books full of these that you're supposed to torture yourself. Or it's really silly. I mean, there's no... I'm not causing a thousand people to die if I let one live. I mean, yeah, I could go around hunting out, ser hunting down, hunting out serial killers and and shooting them and so on. It, I mean, it's such a long, long and complicated answer. But we, this is the argument that we had over buying meat and so on. Mm -hmm. The point is, you're only responsible for the actions that you do. A, a, an an action is only unwholesome, is only bad because of the nature of the mind of the person who performs it. That's it. There's no God telling us this is wrong. There's no society telling us that w w just because God tells you it's wrong, just because society tells you it's wrong, doesn't make anything wrong. So Socrates pointed this out. Socrates said, or Plato, however, but Socrates said that this man was going to take his parents to, to court because he thought it's what the gods wanted. And so Socrates asked him, well, so is it right to take your parents to court because the gods say it, say it's right? Or do the gods say it's right because it's right? And, and either way, you, you can't evoke the gods. There is, no, there is no entity that could tell you that something is right or wrong. You know, murder could be perfectly right. You know, there, there's, there's nothing intrinsic about the, the act of killing someone that is is in any way wrong. If, if one person kills another, it's meaningless to you. If, if this person kills that person, it, it, it's totally unrelated to your state of mind. You can just watch it and say, seeing, seeing. So th there's no relationship. And this is a scientific, this isn't Buddhist theory. I mean, if you're, lo if you're thinking about this logically and removing your emotions from it, if you're thinking of it scientifically, this is why science, scientists have a real problem with ethics and why they cut up rats and poison rats and, and wind up horrible people because they are unable to develop a clear uh, code of ethics simply because from a scientific point of view there's nothing wrong with killing. Killing is the end of a life. What does it mean? It means nothing. The, their, own, their only understanding of ethics is a religious, a religious concept that has no basis in reality. So Buddhism just points one thing out that that not only does the f the physical exist and go by laws of physics, but the mind also exists and it goes by mind by laws of 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 how the mind works. At the moment when you kill something, you create kill someone. You're creating a problem in your mind. When you let someone kill someone else, you're not creating a problem in your mind. This is the only ethical principle in, that that exists in. Theravada Buddhism, anyway, that the actions that you perform will affect your mind, the, the choices that you make. So if you're watching someone kill someone else or kill a thousand people creates anguish in your mind, then you're responsible for the creating of anguish. If you could save those people you know, and, and you choose to not save them, you know, if, if all you had to do is tell them, run, that guy's got a gun or something like that, or, or someone's coming with a gun, go, go hide, and so on. And you don't do that, then you're responsible for that. You're not ever responsible for the killing unless you're the one pulling the trigger, or unless you're the one um, you know, telling a person to kill. If you say to this person, kill that man, I mean, you're still not responsible for pulling the trigger. You're responsible for telling that person to do something. You're responsible for the ethical qualities of mind, the, 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 the greed, the anger and the delusion inherent in the mind inherent in the mind at that moment. So if you if you don't kill the person who's going to kill a thousand per people, then it may be that unwholesomeness arises in your mind as a result. You you think, um, well, let those people die, good, you know, not, nothing to do, not my problem. And so as a result you create some kind of worry and anguish afterwards. I couldn't save them. All I had to do was, was kill that one man. But on the other hand, if you kill that one person, then you have to you have to say, what is different? What what is worse? This guilt that I have over the, those thousand deaths, which weren't you know, my weren't a result of of, of my actions, 
And so the only reason it comes up is because of some intellectualizing or, or some minor feelings of guilt or the feeling of pulling a trigger. I think the real reason why people have a problem with this and a problem with, uh, with understanding things like hunting in general is because they've never done it themselves. If you've never killed a significantly large being, like, um, you know, well, my, my example is a deer, because that's how far I went, uh, or, or even more a human being, then you have no real right to argue this question. And I don't, I don't have the right to argue, but if you've read the books, if you've read you know, accounts of people who have killed, and how it affects them, you know, any of these books, the book I was referring to earlier was Crime and Punishment. It's just an excellent excellent um, description of the torture that goes through the mind of someone who kills another human being that we can't even fathom most of us we think well it's just intellectualizing so you kill someone what's the problem totally different when you actually try to do it it's an incredibly powerful act the only comparison I have is with as I said with hunting with killing a deer I had no compunction no problem with killing and I you know I killed insects and, and small animals and no problem with hunting. I got my hunting license trained and so on. And then I sat up in the tree and when the deer came, uh, raising this, this crossbow, ready to pull the trigger, and suddenly my whole body started to shake. You know, the deer was no threat to me. There was no fear. There should have been no fear in my mind. It wasn't like there was some, you know, some danger to me. But I just got this incredible dread and, and revulsion to it. And my whole body started to shake, and I could barely pull the trigger. That's how powerful it is. This is this wasn't totally not intellectual because I had no feelings of 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 hesitation. I was perfectly ready to do this, and yet when it came time to do that, because I had never done it, because my mind was still pure from that, pure of that, uh, it it had an incredible effect on my mind, and this is what you're looking at if you kill someone. If if you're just talking about the guilt feelings of not having prevented other people's death when, you know, actually in the end all, all of those people are going to have to die anyway, whether it be from a bullet wound or whether it be from old age. Everyone dies and in, and in horrible ways. You can't possibly save uh, even a, a small portion of the people who have to die in horrible ways. If, if, if it's just a matter of feeling that kind of guilt uh, from not having prevented the, the inevitable, you know, uh, or put off the inevitable, then, then it's far preferable to the the horror of having killed a human being, even a even a, a, an evil human being. Um, you know, there are other. There, you know, I've read other accounts of this. Can't remember where, but people, you know, police officers who have had to kill humans, and they can have, or, or the right, the, the one is is post traumatic. Stress disorder, who go to peop soldiers who go to war and will come back and just don't want to ever talk about it again. You know, they're, they've just locked off that part of their mind. It's just so horrific. If you've never been to war, you can't imagine the horrors of war and people who go just have you know are not able to sleep at night because of what they've seen and what they've done. You know, Sumedho was telling us about this these caravans that. They they had to drive from point A to point B, and they they weren't allowed to stop for anything. A man, a woman, child, uh, standing in the middle of the road had to be run over, basically. You know, this kind of thing. I mean, that's going quite far afield, but the horror that 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 is involved with these visceral acts or these um, real acts of body. Um, you know, there's an incredible power there. So it's really... The, the, but the point is that there's no intellectualizing in Buddhism. Buddhism is experiential, ba experientially, is based on experience. You, you can't come up with a theory of morality and call it Buddhist. Buddhism is you are responsible for your own actions and you can never escape that responsibility and you're responsible for nothing else. And that is scientific. It's... Um, verifiable you know you could never verify what is the guilt of letting someone kill someone else you can only verify what is the guilt or what is this the suffering involved 
in your own in your own actions. So if you choose to feel guilty about it, that's going to create suffering for you. If you choose to kill a person to, to not feel guilty, then that's going to cause, I would say as well, or even more uh, intense feelings of, of horror and um, you know, nightmares, because now you're a murderer. Uh, whether it was a justified murder or not, it was murder. 